Out of all the bearings on your bike, without doubt, the simplest one to replace is this, the headset bearing. You don't need any fancy tools like presses or pullers. You can just do it with some simple tools, Allen keys, bit of grease, some cloths. So in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step exactly how we replace the headset bearings on this bike. And while we're at it, we're also gonna address this thing. We've all heard it. Anyone that spent some time with other riders must pack your headset with a bucket load of grease to protect it from the elements. Is that really the right thing to do? Well, we'll have a look at that too. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel. My name is John, I'm the Ribble Valley Cyclist. In this video, we are talking headsets. When should you replace your headset? How do you know which headset is right for your bike? And once you have got the right headset, how do you get the bearings in there? So when doing this job, the first question you need to ask yourself is do you need to do this job? Are you constantly doing up your headset and is it constantly rattling loose? First good sign. Is it like this one? Because this one definitely needs replacing. Really, really noisy, making a real draggy noise. Also, it's clicky, it's twitchy. If you look, it's not naturally just dropping back. It's really clicky in its movement. And another good sign, are you seeing rusty water running out of the headset? Or if you're maintaining your bike and you turn your bike upside down, you're finding rusty water running out of here. These are all really good signs that you've got problems with your headset. And considering how much these things cost and how easy they are to replace, any of that stuff goes on, get it replaced. So you've checked your headset, your bearings are knackered, and you need a new set. So the tricky bit is getting the right bearing for your bike. First of all, here's a bearing. Check the side of it. The size should be written on the edge of the bearing. If it's not, how about drop the frame manufacturer an email? Don't call them, you want it in writing. Dear Mr. Bike Frame Maker, what bearings do I need? If you've got it in writing in an email, if they get it wrong, you've got a leg to stand on. Alternatively, if your bearing is like this, for example, and it's really, really rusty, and you can't see it, why not take it to your local bike shop? Take your old knackered bearing, oh, look at this one, look, it's falling to pieces in my hands. Take your old knackered bearing to your local bike shop and say, can I have a pair of these bearings, please, mate? Or what you could do, if you're trying to build up a bit of a workshop and build up a bit of knowledge yourself, what you could do, is grab yourself one of these. It looks really technical, it's just a fancy ruler. Get it, measure the bearing yourself to work out what size the bearing is. These things aren't expensive. This one came off of Amazon and I think it was about eight pound. And you can just measure the bearings yourself. The only tricky bit of measuring the bearing is that inside chamfer. It's either none at all, zero degrees, 45 degrees or 36 degrees and that is really easy to work out you get your cycling membership card because let's face it you remember you get your bearing and you pop that in there if it perfectly aligns with both sides obviously it's 45 degrees or if there's a bit of a gap no matter what angle you put it at there's a bit of a gap 36 and obviously if there's no chamfer at all there's no chamfer at all and that is how you work it out Oh, nearly forgot, sorry, it's called a vernier gauge. Link in the description below. Right, okay, let's crack on and get the job done. Okay, so what are we going to need to do this job? You are first of all, obviously going to need your new bearings. You are also going to need some Allen keys. You will need a five mil for the top, a four mil for the side, unless of course you ride a stupid Italian bike like this one, where it uses stupid torques, then you will need a T20 or something similar. And you're going to need some cloths and some kind of degreasing agent. So what bearings am I going to be putting in this bike? I have opted for these bearings from Hambini Engineering. So who is Hambini Engineering? Hambini Engineering is best known for making exceptionally good bottom brackets. Some say they're the best in the world. But he's also known for his very, shall we say, down-to-earth YouTube channel. Some say it's a bit controversial. 
link in the description below. The way I see it is Hambini Engineering is very passionate about doing a good job, especially when it comes to bearings. So, although these are only simple headset bearings, the way I see it, it's a very good place to go to ensure you're getting a quality product. Because trust me, there's some crap out there. And at five pounds plus VAT per bearing, I think that's a very good value. Right, let's get them in the bike. Started by taking the front wheel off. I've done that already, you don't wanna see that, do you? And with, as with all my videos, let's start with some top tips. Tip number one, if you haven't done so already, get yourself a maintenance stand. It is the best bit of kit you will ever own. Maintain your bike on it, wash your bike on it, store your bike on it. Get these online, places like eBay or Amazon New, with all the quick release and stuff like that, they're about 30 pounds. I've had this one seven years. It cost me 30 quid. Best 30 quid I ever spent in the workshop. Get yourself one. Second tip. When you start stripping this down, those forks will fall on the floor. It's not if they fall on the floor, it's when they fall on the floor. The more you take out, the more chance of it falling on the floor. If you've got something like that, a bit of bungee, just get it, put it around the forks. That will now stop those forks falling on the floor. If you're really paranoid about it, use a bit of string, use a couple of rubber bands, whatever. Chuck something on there, won't fall on the floor. Another great tip for you, those spacers, can you tell me right now what your spacers are? I bet you can't, nobody knows what they are. They just know they're there. Grab your camera, point it at it, boom. Take a photograph of it, there you go. I've now got a photograph of what order they were in. So when I put them back together again, I know what order they go in. And as I go further down and I see other stuff that I might not remember, I'll do it again. So, front wheels off, forks aren't gonna fall out. Five mil Allen key. Let's get that top cap off. And then I'll get the stem off. Right, so that's the top cap off. Bolts undone on my stem. Very carefully, wiggle my stem off. I need to be careful with this one because it's got a little block in the back of it. Steady away, bring it off. There you go, there's my little block. Very carefully, place your handlebars down on the side. Make sure they're not gonna wobble about or hit the frame. Off come the spacers. I can confidently lift all this stuff away because I've got my bungee in place. So we've got the stem off, our spacer rings, safe on one side. We now remove the top cap and the compression ring. The top cap is the thing that's keeping it all sealed and protected and the compression ring is what's holding the bearings in place. So. That is your top cap. And what you'll normally find with those is they'll have rubber seals underneath. We'll come back to that. And then the compression ring. That, a bit like a washer, deep chamfered edge that sits in the bearing and holds the bearing in place, as you can see with a little gap there. Okay. So the next step is to undo things and drop this out. Now, depending on the condition of yours, you might then find you end up with a load of bearings on the floor, but let's just drop that out. So for me, this is dropping out lovely. And that bearing is coming away absolutely fine. So that is the top, the bottom bearing. And then we'll fish around and carefully lift out the top bearing. So the next step is to very carefully clean all of this. So once you've got your bearings out, the next job that you need to do is clean absolutely everything to within an inch of its life, using your cloth and your degreaser. Now, I've already started cleaning mine, but I thought I'd stop and I'd show you a few things. So there is the bearing out of the top of this headset. And if we listen to that, it's perfectly smooth, not making any noise. So to be honest with you, you could put that back in. And here, is the bottom bearing. 
Now, I don't know if you can pick that up, but that bearing is making a lot of noise, so that one's for the bin. Another thing you need to look out for is down here, and I'll show you this next. So in some cases, your bottom bearing will sit directly onto the fork, but in other cases, you will have something called a crown gear. And basically what you've got here is a metal ring that holds that race in place and keeps everything where it needs to be. And this is very easily lifted by splitting the ring with a screwdriver and sliding it off of the fork. All you're doing is you're taking it off, it's like the one that was on the top. There it is, complete with it splitting it, which you probably can't actually see. But all you're doing is you're taking that off to give it a thorough clean and to clean off all the crud that has built up and the grime and the grit that has built up underneath it, like that. Get all that cleaned, and then we can move on to the next step. Whilst we're still on the subject of cleaning, check out a pro product called Wonder Wipes. Fantastic these, workshop wipes. You can use these for wiping absolutely anything. Big tub, 300 of them. Pick them up, most DIY places. You can use it to wipe down the frame, or you can use it to wipe all the crud out the headset. And once you've wiped all the crud out, you can get it and throw it in the bin. Wonder wipes, 300 of them in the tub, self seal, 15 quid. Brilliant. One more thing on cleaning and then I promise we will move on. The top cap. Most people don't pay a great deal of attention to this when they're doing this process. Turn it upside down and you'll first of all, you'll probably find it is absolutely packed with cruddy grease. Get yourself a screwdriver and clean all of that out. However, another thing to remember with this, if you've got a modern bike like this, that will more than likely also have a rubber lip on it that works to protect that top bearing from water ingress. And because it's so packed with grease, it's probably laying flat and not doing its job properly. So just pay a little bit of attention to that top cap. Top cap that sits on there, clear all the grease out of it, and just check if it's got a little rubber seal on it. They can normally be lifted out and you can clear the, clean the whole lot out and then pop the rubber seal back on. Right, promise now, let's move on to putting it back together again. Right, now let's talk grease. The most common mistake made when doing this job is what grease is put where. Now some people, including the biggest cycling YouTube channel out there, will tell you, and I quote, pack the top and bottom with grease. Now the thing is, grease is fantastic at stopping water getting in, but it's also just as fantastic at stopping it getting out. So the vast majority of water that gets into your headset comes in from the top, either from rain just trickling down inside it, or when you hose it down when you're washing it. Don't think for one second that the water is getting into the bottom bearing by flicking up off that front wheel. It's not, it's all coming in in the top. And what's happening is it's running down here, running down, and because the bottom is packed with grease, that water has got no way of getting out. So it just sits in the bottom of the frame, and in the bottom bearing, and sits there rotting those bearings. And have you ever seen it when that happens and it's been left for a while, and then the bike gets turned upside down? There is a picture, and that is the damage it causes. That is rusty water running out, and that rust has come from the rotting of those bearings at the bottom. So, as I say, packing grease is great at stopping the water getting in, but it's also fantastic at stopping the water getting out. 
So while we're on the subject of letting the water drain out, let's just stop a second and have a look at the two bearings that are going to be going into this bike. Now, other than the size, there is one obvious difference between those two bearings. That one has a black seal on it, and that one has an orange seal on it. What's going here? Does it make a difference? Yes, it does. That is what they call a full seal. And what that does is it, that seal fits tight and it prevents water getting in. That is what they call a non-contact seal. And what basically means there is the seal doesn't fit tight to the end edges. It doesn't contact. And what that does is it allows the water to pass through the bearing if water gets trapped above it. So, Hambini Engineering, nice move. They have provided a full seal for the top to try and prevent the water getting in, but a non-contact seal at the bottom so the water drains out. And let's compare that to what Pinarello provided with the bike. It's Pinarello, they would have done it right. Really, here we go. <laughs> Buckle up, it's gonna be a bumpy one. No, they didn't. Correct on the top, full seal, full seal on the bottom. So that bearing is sat there, watertight seal, and the water's sitting on the top. And it's never gonna hold the water back 100%, so that is why that bearing is knackered. Now, if you're finding this content useful, then do me a huge favor and hit that like button. It makes a massive difference to the channel. And if bike maintenance is your thing, then why not hit subscribe and then the bell icon, and then you'll get notified every time I upload a video. So now let's take a look at the grease we're going to use on these bearings. Just because an organization makes a good workshop apron and a nice smelling pink foaming bike cleaner, that doesn't also mean that they make good grease or lubricants. So for this job, I am going to use an general purpose assembly grease. Now you can use Phoenix general purpose assembly grease, or you can use the Park Tool PPL1. To be honest with you, both are as good. A couple of tips for you. Get a massive syringe. It's just easier to apply the grease with one of these. These are the ones that vets use to like give like calves and stuff medication. You could pick them up on Amazon for like three quid. Or if you want to be fancy, you can go for the Park Tool GG1. It's like a it's a little plunger type thing, and you push it, and the grease comes out. Thing is with this though, this isn't brilliant for <laughs> applying large amounts of grease because it comes out like a little needle. But these are great. Oh, alternatively, you can actually just use it from the tubes. All is just as good. Right, okay, let's crack on and apply some grease. Right, so let's start by putting the bottom bearing in. So first of all, you need to put some grease on the bearing. If you put no grease on the bearing, in my opinion, you do run the risk. If that bearing was to seize, then you do run the risk of friction in the bearing cups and on the top of the fork and everything and it could do damage. So it's sensible to apply a small amount of grease to the bearing to aid installation. And what you're also doing is you are getting a small amount of grease and doing a similar thing inside the bearing seat and also on the forks, just enough to apply a little bit of lubrication and aid with the bearing installation so it slides into place. And then we just pop that bearing in place and that little bit of grease will hopefully hold that bearing in place and hopefully when I move my hand it doesn't fall on the floor. There you go, it's gonna stay in place. And now let's do the top. Right, the top. So as I was saying earlier, sorry to bang on about it, but with the top, we want to try and prevent the water getting in and getting down to the bottom. So on the top, 
we can be a bit more generous with the grease. Now I'm not suggesting we put a handful of it and slap it on there, but it's a good idea just to apply a little more grease in this area just to try and make a, a water seal. But you remember me saying earlier about that top cap? Well, that top cap is now all cleaned and that rubber seal is now standing proud instead of being squashed down by grease. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply some grease around that as well. Put some grease around the bearing and then we can look at sliding it all back together. I've got my bottom bearing in with minimal grease. I've got my top bearing in, a bit more generous on the grease. My top cap, I've put plenty of grease on that. Hopefully that's gonna stay in focus. I've put plenty of grease on that, so that makes a nice watertight seal. I put a small amount of grease on the fork. That fork crown gear is back in place, pushed down nice and tight. And now it's a process of basically reversing the disassembly process. So, grab my little bungee thing. Slot my fork back in. First thing first, put that there. Right, I can, I can now relax. Right, so that's now in place. Then what we do, back on the top. And that is now holding the fork central to the bearing. Top cap, complete with plenty of grease. Hold the bottom of the fork. Pop that back on. Then, those spacers. Can't remember what order they went in. Did you have some at the top and some at the bottom of the stem? Look at that photo you took earlier and place them all back on. And I'll carry on doing this, and I'll see you once I'm a bit further on. So my space is back in place. Now before I put my stem on, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a cloth and some kind of cleaner, like it can be a brake cleaner, it can be a degreaser, you know, it can be white spirit, just something, give that a quick wipe there. That steerer tube, you don't want grease on that. As you've pushed that, steerer tube up through there, you may have picked up a little bit of grease on the top. You don't want any grease on that because it couldn't cause slip and also grease on carbon can cause the carbon to swell. So that's just giving that a quick clean. And now what we can do, offer the stem back on. Top tip here, pay attention, look at your pipes. Have they twisted? Because if the handlebars are twisted all the way round, then you don't want them all knotted up when they go back on. So just make sure they look like they're something sensible and slot that back on. And then you can crack on, putting your top cap back on and putting the bolt in. So that is everything back together, but it's all back together very, very loose. None of this is done up. The next step is to put a small amount of compression between the forks and the stem and basically pull it all together. And we do that through this bolt at the top here with our five mil Allen key, this bolt called the preload bolt. But in order to be able to do that, what we need to do first of all, is we need to put the bike back on the ground. And to put the bike back on the ground, it needs wheels. Right, we're making some great progress. We've got a bike that looks like a bike again. It doesn't look like it's been in a crash and it's on the floor and it's on its wheels. This is a great start. So what we now do is we now have a feel and you will see that there's a load of slop there and everything is wobbling around. And the reason it's wobbling around, because as you remember before we took it off the stand, I said everything was loose. So first job, just align that front wheel. So the handlebar stem and front wheel are all in one line. So when you do eventually get to ride your bike again, you go in a straight line. Then what we're going to do is we're going to deal with this preload bolt. So what this bolt is going to do, this bolt is going to pull the, pull the forks and the stem down and sandwich them together. So it takes all that slop out and it holds everything compressed. Now, what you don't want to do here is just get a big spanner and crank it round. Because if you don't do this up to enough, 
you'll end up damaging the bearings in the frame, but if you do it up too much, you end up damaging the bearings in the frame. So you've got to get this just right. And the simple trick for this is, put the front brake on and then wobble the frame. And when you've got the front brake on and you're wobbling the frame, you will see a load of movement, a load of slop between the top cap and the frame. If I wobble that, you'll see there's a load of slop. So all we do is we hold this, give it a small amount of pressure and wobble it. And as we're wobbling it, turn and just look. And soon as that slop goes, and when you put your brake on, you can't, actually I can still feel it a bit. Let's give it a bit more of a turn, not too much, just a bit of a turn. And now it's completely gone. So like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm now going to do the bolts up on your stem. They may be on the side, or it may be like this one where it uses a torque bolt. So we will do those up. Now, if you've got a torque wrench, use a torque wrench. This one, six Newton meters, set my torque wrench to six Newton meters, and I'll torque those bolts up. But the bike was invented way before the torque wrench. If you haven't got a torque wrench, don't panic. Just use common sense. It's a steel bolt going into alley. Use your common sense. Don't do it up too tight. So, just pinch it up. Don't go mad. And that is the job done. However, what you may find is that may loosen up again. Get the bike, take it for a ride down the road, bump it down the curb a few times and put a bit of compression in those forks. And what you'll find is after a, just a mile or so, this may all compress down. And then when you hold that front again, you may start getting a little bit of slop there. Look at that, remember what I said to you? Look at the top cap and, and the top of the frame and just give it a wiggle. You might find it comes back. So that last little process there where loosen those bolts on the stem, wiggle, hold the, hold the bolt, just do it up a little bit tighter and then do it again. And that should resolve any slop that you get further down the line. Now, if you're in the process of servicing your bike, why not check out that video up there where I give you my tips how to stop the nightmare that is rubbing disc brakes. And if you enjoy riding your bike in this amazing summer weather we're getting, why not check out that video down there where I show you the top 10 things I take on every bike ride I go on. Thanks for watching.